recorded by Miss S. E. Waldo, a disciple. Tuesday, 25th June 1895 After every happiness comes misery, they may be far apart or near. The more advanced the soul, the more quickly does one follow the other. What we want is neither happiness nor misery. Both make us forget our true nature, both are chains, one iron, one gold, behind both is the Atman, who knows neither happiness nor misery. These are states and states must ever change, but the nature of the soul is bliss, peace, unchanging. We have not to get it, we have it, only wash away the dross and see it. Stand upon the self, then only can we truly love the world. Take a very, very high stand, knowing out universal nature, we must look with perfect calmness upon all the panorama of the world. It is but baby's play, and we know that, so cannot be disturbed by it. If the mind is pleased with praise, it will be displeased with blame. All pleasures of the senses or even of the mind are evanescent, but within ourselves is the one true unrelated pleasure, dependent upon nothing. It is perfectly free, it is bliss. The more our bliss is within, the more spiritual we are. The pleasure of the self is what the world calls religion. The internal universe, the real, is infinitely greater than the external, which is only a shadowy projection of the true one. This world is neither true nor untrue, it is the shadow of truth. Imagination is the gilded shadow of truth, says the poet. We enter into creation, and then for us it becomes living. Things are dead in themselves, only we give them life, and then, like fools, we turn around and are afraid of them or enjoy them. But be not like certain fisherwomen, who, caught in a storm on their way home from market, took refuge in the house of a florist. They were lodged for the night in a room next to the garden where the air was full of the fragrance of flowers. In vain did they try to rest, until one of their number suggested that they wet their fishy baskets and place them near their heads. Then they all fell into a sound sleep. The world is our fish basket, we must not depend upon it for enjoyment. Those who do are the tamasas or the bound. Then there are the rajsas or the egotistical, who talk always about I, I. They do good work sometimes and may become spiritual. But the highest are the sattvikas, the introspective, those who live only in the self. These three qualities, tamas, rajas, and sattva, idleness, activity, and illumination, are in everyone and different ones predominate at different times. Creation is not a making of something, it is the struggle to regain the equilibrium as when atoms of cork are thrown to the bottom of a pail of water and rush to rise to the top, singly or in clusters. Life is and must be accompanied by evil. A little evil is the source of life, the little wickedness that is in the world is very good, for when the balance is regained, the world will end, because sameness and destruction are one. When this world goes, good and evil go with it, but when we can transcend this world, we get rid of both good and evil and have bliss. There is no possibility of ever having pleasure without pain, good without evil, for living itself is just the lost equilibrium. What we want is freedom, not life, nor pleasure, nor good. Creation is infinite, without beginning and without end, the ever-moving ripple in an infinite lake. There are yet unreached depths and others where the equilibrium has been regained, but the ripple is always progressing, the struggle to regain the balance is eternal. Life and death are only different names for the same fact, the two sides of the one con. Both are maya, the inexplicable state of striving at one time to live and a moment later to die. Beyond this is the true nature, the Atman. While we recognize a God, 
it is really only the self which we have separated ourselves from and worship as outside of us, but it is our true self all the time, the one and only God. To regain the balance we must counteract Tamas by Rajas, then conquer Rajas by Sattva, the calm beautiful state that will grow and grow until all else is gone. Give up bondage, become a son, be free, and then you can see the Father, as did Jesus. Infinite strength is religion and God. Avoid weakness and slavery. You are only a soul, if you are free, there is immortality for you, if you are free, there is God, if He is free. The world for me, not I for the world. Good and evil are our slaves, not we theirs. It is the nature of the brute to remain where he is, not to progress. It is the nature of man to seek good and avoid evil. It is the nature of God to seek neither, but just to be eternally blissful. Let us be God. Make the heart like an ocean, go beyond all the trifles of the world, be mad with joy even at evil, see the world as a picture and then enjoy its beauty, knowing that nothing affects you. Children finding glass beads in a mud puddle, that is the good of the world. Look at it with calm complacency, see good and evil as the same, both are merely God's play, enjoy all. My master used to say, all is God, but tiger God is to be shunned. All water is water, but we avoid dirty water for drinking. The whole sky is the censer of God, and sun and moon are the lamps. What temple is needed? All eyes are thine, yet thou hast not an eye. All hands are thine, yet thou hast not a hand. Neither seek nor avoid, take what comes. It is liberty to be affected by nothing. Do not merely endure, be unattached. Remember the story of the bull. A mosquito sat long on the horn of a certain bull. Then his conscience troubled him, and he said, Mr. Bull, I have been sitting here a long time, perhaps I annoy you. I am sorry, I will go away. But the bull replied, Oh no, not at all. Bring your whole family and live on my horn, what can you do to me?